Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this episode 113 from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I'm a Swedish expat and I live here with my Australian husband and our two daughters and I love to knit and I love wool and I love yarn and that's a huge part of my life and that's what this podcast is all about. I'm here in my studio with a lot of my hand-dyed yarn behind me and I'll tell you more about that later. But this podcast is a way for me to get to talk about these things that I really love and really enjoy and have someone um, maybe also interested in the same type of things listen and interact with me in different ways. And uh, yes, this is me time for me this is something that i really really enjoy and i try to take time for this as often as i can which sometimes more often than other times so welcome everyone welcome if you're new or if you're a returning viewer i love having you here and i really appreciate uh, you spending some of your time visiting me here in my studio I have been quite busy in the last couple of weeks. In, is it four or five days from now, there's the big wool show happening in Australia. It's on the weekend of the 17th to the 20th of July, and it's a big online virtual market and show There'll be workshops and, and speakers and just different things happening. So it's a big event and it's been organised as a way for everyone in the fibre industry and wool and knit, knitting interested people to have an event um, instead of the Australian Sheep and Wool Show that normally happens in Bendigo at that time. But that's cancelled this year due to the pandemic so um i mean i think it's a fabulous idea that someone has taken the time to create something that will hopefully um be a wonderful experience when we can't go to bendigo i'm sure it will be a wonderful experience but i i um Yes, if it, it can't replace Bendigo, but it sure will be a really good alternative for this year when it's the option we have. So, yes, I am part of that um, wool show. I'm going to have a virtual market store at the show. Uh, so I have been preparing for that show um, in the last few weeks. So... In my last episode, a lot of things had just recently happened in my life and I was talking about it, but in the end, I just cut it all out when I was editing the video because I thought it was just a bit self-centered, really. But um, basically, I'll just mention it because it sort of plays a role with what's happening with what I do. Um, Basically, I I found out that my contract with my three days a week work <laughs> in the lab, uh, my contract would not be extended beyond June, uh, as we had all expected, but uh, for different reasons, one of them being that there, there was less money in the budget than everyone thought and other things as well. Um, Yes, so we had all prepared for an extension of the contract, but that was just not able to happen. So starting this month, July 2020, I now no longer have those three days a week um, going working in the lab. So that happened just at a time as school holidays started. So my children are home for three weeks. So in a way it was good I was not having to go into work only working from home and I had the children home 
and we still have one week left of the school holidays. And then also I started prepping for the big wall show. So for the last two weeks I have been, and I started before that as well, but more intensely <laughs> I have been preparing for the wool show since my children and I have been home. So it's been a balancing act having the children at home and uh, doing things with them and prepping for the show. But in a way so far it's been good. I haven't had my three days a week to go into work um, and it's been good that I haven't really noticed that I don't have that work anymore because in in thinking about the time because I've been so busy and um, so I haven't really had a time to just sort of yeah feel the change so uh, I've been prepping for the wool show I've been busy and then after the wool show I guess I'll have to see what I can end up doing we'll see what happens see what other things are other opportunities are out there so that's what's that's what's going on so yes but I've been busy so it's been it's been good it's been crazy it's been good in a way I wish that I could just have a week off just to myself not really doing much except for knitting <laughs> but maybe that will come um after the school holidays and after the wool, wool, the big wool show we'll see so oh i should mention that for the big wool show i did create a short six minute video for the actual virtual market stall that i have sent to the organizer of the big wool show and they've you know they've put out uh, for people to be able to watch it as part of the event but I have also um, today actually recorded a video like a walk through my virtual market stall so I'm just going to post that here on my YouTube channel um, and I, I realized that I don't know it might not be interested to people that are not Australian or it might be it might just be a fun thing but I have basically recorded this video showing a lot of the stuff that I have available in my shop and uh, that will be also on this channel. So this is a normal podcast episode and I am going to show you some of the things that I have been working on lately. I've been doing quite a bit of dyeing. This is my new merino linen single yarn um, and I have been doing a lot of dyeing of that but I also have been able to fit in some knitting of course so I'm excited to share that with you. I'm standing up today it's, it's weird isn't it but um it's just how I had things set up for how what I've been doing for the wool show so I thought I'd just try it out and see what happens. I'm wearing my Love Note sweater by Tin Can Knits and I made this out of my own hand dyed yarn in fingering weight and also a merino mohair no a mohair silk lace great uh, yarn the two of them held together I love this jumper so much it's so soft and it's bright and fun and it makes me happy when I wear it okay so I have finished a few things um looking at my pile here on the table there's a lot of socks which surprises me because I don't feel like I have been doing a lot of sock knitting um, I finished my June socks for Free Socks 2020, the Knit Along by Kia. And the June pattern was Petit Fleur by I'm a Whale. Interesting name, yes. Um, so I have two of those. <laughs> and I used Aussie Farmer Markets uh, yarn, a beautiful variegated purples and blues and greens, pinks which was a um, scan she did for the Tits Out Collective, the charities, or charity dyeing that a lot of indie dyers did maybe last year. This was a scan that I actually won in a giveaway for a sock inch long. And I just combined that with a white, normal white paste nail sock yarn. 
and like with most well a lot of the socks for this knit along that the patterns that Kia have chosen for each um month I have I have not hesitated I've been prepared to do all of them but often I've been thinking this is a pattern that I would I would never choose to do if if I could just knit anything but with all of them I've been very happy to have the finished socks some of them have been more challenging and not all of them very exciting to knit um, but this was a sock that was actually very nice to knit when I first looked at it I thought it oh that was just complicated that would take that would take so long but it's actually a quick quite a quick knit and um, create the color work with slip stitches so only work with one color at a time so I really enjoyed making those and then I did a quick little slipper sock after I finished that one at the end of June and I made the Joe's Perfect Slipper Sock by Cozy Up Knits and do I have, let me see this yarn is a DK weight sock yarn from Novita. I used 50 grams making a pair. It's just one strand of DK. And the yarn is the Novita Moomin. So I don't know if it's inspired by Moomin or if they just call this range of yarn Moomin. So they're really fun. They were such a quick knit. I think I made one in an evening. And I really like how the whole heel construction worked. The heel is short row with twin stitches, similar to the Fish Lips Kiss heel. But how the, the there was like a flap and then short rows and then picking up in the gusset. So it was really fun. And they they're really good fit on the foot. So I made those, which was a nice fun thing. And in the pattern, um, I think originally they made them holding two strands of fingering weight yarn together. And that's something that I would really like to do for uh, marling, for standard podcast marl along, and also a great thing to make for stash dash. So. Now I've mentioned those two uh, knit alongs that I am part of. So that was those slipper socks. And then Kia released the um, July pattern for Free Socks 2020. And the July pattern is uh, Thunder and Lightning by Dawn Henderson. And I just cast that on straight away. I think I was probably avoiding working on something else. And... Um, I have already completed my July socks and today I think it's the 11th so I've been quick um, again this is a pattern that I would never have contemplated casting on and making because this looks like oh, complicated it has twisted stitches it works from cuff down and then it has this sort of chevron with the bobble and then it has a textured rib and that's for me of oh, too much too much thinking too much following a pattern how I think when I'm sitting there and thinking oh, I'd like to make a sock but actually having all these different parts of the sock made me you know it's like self striping socks you want to go to the next stripe you want to not go to the next section in the pattern um so I did this quite quickly and then worked through the foot. When I had finished the gussets of the foot, this last bit here took a little bit of time because then it was just the same again. <laughs> and I think uh, I managed to get quite a tight gauge, so it, it was a lot of knitting to get the correct length. 
but uh, yes I have completed those two and the yarn that I'm using or that I used was a um, half a skein of circus tonic handmade yarn crested dove or something it was the colorway I bought a skein of this um, at the stash cupboard in Hobart when that shop was still open years and years ago and I used half of the skein for a pair of um, crochet socks that I did for um, a test crochet for Adiday Design. So I still had 50 grams and I thought when the July sock was a shorty sock, I thought um, I should be fine with 50 grams. And I have about four meters left of the skein. <laughs> and the reason I had it out was because I'm working on um, a jumper that I'll show you soon. I have shown you before, but it uses a lot of, of leftover sock yarn. So I had all my leftover and partial skeins of sock yarn out. So um sort of remembered that I had this one and it didn't go with the jumper that I'm making. So um, I'm really happy that I grabbed this skein for these socks. They're fun spring sock, shorty socks. I have I think I only have a couple of shorty socks, um, but I think they can be quite useful. These ones are a bit thicker, so they're more like an in, inside slipper than something you'd wear with shoes, I think. So that's that one, Thunder and Lightning by Dawn Henderson. So that's, again, a free pattern, like all the patterns that Kia has for her knit along. And did I, that's... The three things that I have finished since I last recorded a podcast. Um, then things that I was working on. I have one thing that I was working on last time, and that's the jumper I was just mentioning before. It's my Metropolis jumper. It's a pattern by Tannis Lavelli of Tannis Fiber Arts. I can't remember exactly how far I'd got last time. So this is a bulky or shanky even jumper. Um, in the original pattern, it's just one strand of a shanky yarn, but um, Tannis has also made a project with notes uh, for a mild holding three or four strands of fingering weight yarn together. Uh, and that's what I have done. So I'm holding four strands of fingering weight yarn together and I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles, but I'm a loose knitter, so I think that's quite a small needle size for this. And I just got all of my mini skeins and partial skeins of sock yarn out. Most of them dyed by me, some of them dyed by friends, and some of them I have purchased from other indie dyers. And I just have been combining them, starting with the lighter pink, and then I went into the blue purple, and then I've ended up um, with a dark purple and gray. And um, what I had left of this um, variegated yarn, I have used um, in this jumper. Um, so I have completed the body and now I, I have to do the sleeves. And I know that when you do something like this, when you're fading or something, you can weigh your skeins as you work the body and set aside for your sleeves um, the correct amount to be able to do the sleeves in the same uh, way as you did the body. Um, I didn't do that. I just, for every skein I joined in the body, I tried to find something that was very similar and I put that aside for the sleeves. So I have now been stalling on this jumper for about two weeks. Um, I picked up the stitches for a sleeve, but I haven't started on it because I have to now I feel like I have to think a bit to make the sleeves look similar to the body. And I think I probably have to have a look at all the ends that I have on the inside to see what yarn I've been joining in at the different points. Uh, if the sleeves don't, I mean, I'm not expecting them to look exactly the same, but I just want them to look a little bit similar. Um, We'll see. We'll see. I, I'll maybe I'll work on this. Maybe during the big wool show when I'm at home enjoying the show, 
<laughs> um, maybe then I'll, I'll need to admit a bit. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I really, one of the main reasons I really want to have it finished, it's not only because I think it would be beautiful, it's also because I really want to weigh it and see how much yarn I have used. <laughs> I'm hoping it will be a lot and it will just be great for Stash Dash. So this one I'm making both for Stash Dash, like everything I'm finishing now until the end of Stash Dash, and it's also for the Mile Along by Amy of Stranded by Alex. So that's that one. It's just amazing how the colours that you create, like combining different stains. Just lots of fun. So that's that one. And then I Sorry, if I'm wobbling and everything. Um, then I have been doing all this dyeing, and I um, had some special things. I did some cell striping sock yarn, and that was something that I actually started sort of when the pandemic or it all started up, and I was working from home, and my children were doing school from home, and I was under this crazy illusion that I would have so much time and I could do all these things that I normally don't have time for so I started warping up the self-striping yarn on my warping board and then I had these <laughs> long skeins for self-striping yarn and I didn't have the time to do the dyeing and all the winding and everything but now for the big wool show I um, um, made sure I had some time to get some of these self striping yarns um, finished. So I have only a very limited number of those. Um, but I did um, wind up, I'll just talk to you as I'm fixing here. Um, I did wind up a little bit of extra, not full skeins, for some sample skeins for me. So I've been able to knit up some um, samples. So this is one of my self-striping that I have. And I've just used a, a white, same white as I used for these ones. This is like, now I just grab whatever is left in my product bags, it seems like. Um, so that's one of the self-striping. And I had a 30 gram um, sample skein or ball. So this one here. This is a full one, but I had a 30 gram one. So I just did the white cuff and then I, I worked just straight until I had used 15 grams, so half of what I had. And um, I, I sort of checked it and I thought, yes, that would be just long enough for a shorty sock. So then I made the, the toe and then I cut in and did a, a true afterthought heel. Um, and these fit me really well. They're good size. So that was, that was just really lucky. That was just how it ended up. <laughs> so I'm very happy with those. I have one of those, but I have enough yarn to make a, um, a partner for this one. And then another one that I have knitted up as a sample is, is this one. And that's this one here. So I did this exactly the same way and I did one of each. I, I wanted to have the sample of both of them and it's crazy how much time I'm putting into these samples when really I don't have many of the skeins available. But I also just really like working with um, self-striping sock yarn. So I thought I'll do one of each because I can also use them as a, a pair until I have made um, the partner for each of them. So that's something that I completed and I completed this really quickly in just a couple of days. You know, self-striping yarn and nine inch circulars just flies off the needles. So that's those. And then the last thing that I have been eating on is also a sample and it was quite exciting uh, for me to cast on because it is made out of the um, um, merino and linen yarn. And I've heard so many good things about this yarn on mainly on Swedish podcasts. There's a um, a dyer in well, it's maybe it'll be more than one dyer in Sweden that's been dyeing on this yarn base. And um, when I was 
sort of thinking about what I would like to do for my dyeing business and for my shop and I wanted something new and a bit, bit exciting and just yes do something a bit different and new um I thought this yarn base really is something that I haven't really seen uh, in Australia much so I I ordered some in to dye on and I heard so many good things about it that I thought yeah, it's gonna be great so that's the uh, merino linen so I've dyed up a heap of different colorways a lot of very uh, dark but also nice and, and and light ones so I had some and I had um had some skeins that up first just as samples just to see how they would take the dye and everything and then um i was looking for something to make out of the skeins and had three different colors and i was really tempted to cast on the the stillness mystery cow by helen stewart and um, and i've seen some teasers from that and it's absolutely beautiful but i'm not really much of a lace shawl um user i don't know i just i have a lot of shawls and i do wear shawls but i didn't feel like it would be something i mean it could be a shop sample but it was it was still not i decided against making it also it was three colors and i thought it would take in the lace and i thought i want something that will knit up a little bit faster um so that i can actually show it soon and i looked through all these things there's beautiful patterns um for sort of summer tops making using this yarn base lots of nice different shawls and things and it took me days and then in the end i settled on a pattern that had been on the top of my queue in ravelry for a long time probably the past year it's been sitting there waiting and it's the Amber O'Brien Shawl Sherry Chevron, and there's you can do it with a, a fingering weight and a um, mohair silk alternating. I'll show you. I've started on this using two of the colorways on the merino linen, and it's a bit messy because I haven't cut off any of the ends. So that's it. This is just a little start of it. But basically you create like a triangle by increasing out and then um, decreasing and creating these um, chevrons. Uh, so you can do it with like this with two fingering weight yarns, but you can also have one of the stripes or one of the colorways as a mohair silk. And I had seen that and that's what I wanted to do. And I had some mohair uh, set aside. Um, and I had some, this is also the merino linen. So I had some skeins that I, I thought these would all be beautiful like that. Um, but then in the end, I decided to use two different colorways of the merino linen because I really wanted to use that yarn. And this is my like prototype of a base. I now have the, the sky colorway. And this was one where I basically I just threw colours at a skein. <laughs> just dry pigment and added water and, and I got this, this beautiful sort of a dirty brown pink colourway. And I've tried to recreate it, but when I tried to recreate it, I got this much more pink. But it's also beautiful. This is a vintage rose. Um but yes, I wasn't haven't been able to create recreate it but I have lots of similar colorways browns with speckles and grays with speckles so that's the sherry chevron by Amber O'Brien and I'm loving how this yarn is knitting up single ply yarn is just really beautiful for shawls and you get that beautiful sheen and the linen is just adding texture and interest and depth to the knitting so I haven't been able to to work a lot on it, but at least enough to be able to enjoy a little bit of it and to be able to show some of this yarn knitted up. So that's 
the shawl that I'm working on. And this, this and my jumper is something that I, I'll, I'm hoping to be um, knitting on during the, the Big Wool show. And I might also have to do a special cast on for the Big Wool show. I think there might be a knit along happening, but I haven't really heard anything about it. Um, so I'll just see what happens. But um, those, this shawl and the jumper, they're the two main things that I'm working on. Um, I'm not sure when I'll, I'll get around to knitting the partners for these two. I don't feel in a rush with that. Um, I do have another colorway um, that I have a sample skein of, this one here, but I don't have very much of it, so I won't be able to make shorty socks. I might just do a bit of the stripes on a plain sock. I'll just see, but I have that too. Um, yeah, they're, they're the things that I have been working on. That's that's what I've been doing since I last recorded a podcast. Um, I don't think I want to make this episode very long, and I have been doing a lot of other video in preparation for the wool show. Um, I have now a lot of labelling to do of all the yarn. Everything now has a colourway name. <laughs> And something I did this morning for some new colorways, just sort of some names. So now I need to label things. I have some more photos I need to take and get everything ready up on my website, rosehipisland.com. And so that is already there on Thursday, the 17th, when the show uh, starts. And all the stall holders will be linked through the, the show website. Um, so I think that was all I was um, wanting to to share with you. I well, I, I hope that you will check out the Big Wool Show. I think um, I think it will be something that you can enjoy both in, as an Australian and if you're in another country. I don't know how much of it will be very sort of well I actually think that this is a great opportunity for people in other countries to see a little bit about what's going on in the Australian um fiber industry and knitting and, and wool um related um things but I'm not really sure about exactly what will happen during the show but I mean go and check out the website and definitely keep an eye on it on the 17th of July when it all starts um, it's all set free <laughs> okay well I feel like I need to go and grab some lunch and then I'll start labeling all my yarn thank you so much for watching and um, thank you for um, making it through to the end <laughs> And I, I, I hope you have enjoyed spending a little bit of time with me and um, I hope to see you next time. So until then, take care. Bye.